As we mentioned a moment ago, what is considered to be the largest ransomware attack ever occurred on Friday and still having an impact today. As we mentioned, a Miami-based IT company was attacked with their services to those companies interrupted in hopes of a $70 million payment in Bitcoin. Brian Horning is the CEO of cybersecurity firm Exact IT Solutions, and he joins us right now. Brian, thanks for a few moments. Hey, Dan, thanks for having me on. Thank you. So uh, I, let's, I guess, start with your overview on what happened, how it occurred, and where we stand right now. So there was a vulnerability in a software program known as Kaseya VSA, and that is a software program that a lot of IT companies use to manage their clients' computers and networks and pretty much everything. So this software pretty much allows us to do everything and runs in what is known as God mode when it comes to the IT world. These these tools can basically do anything they want on the system, and that's what they were able to compromise. And I guess we should note that it seems like for Kaseya, it was uh, about 50 of their direct customers that were impacted by this, but obviously all of those other direct customers have you know, a few hundred uh, firms that they're working with, so it's kind of a spider web uh, in terms of the impact here. That's absolutely correct. So as we go down the supply chain uh, in this attack, you're going to find more and more numbers at w where the customers are the clients of these IT companies. Uh, and it appears from my research that the hackers targeted specific MSPs and, and knew that they were hitting client, uh, MSPs or IT companies with large client bases. We've seen a variety of hacks, obviously, in the last few years, and we hear the conversations about security and protection, uh, but these attacks are still occurring. Is there, is there a belief that this can be a fail-safe system at some point? There is technology out today uh, around things called zero trust that would have prevented this type of attack. However, uh, businesses are 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 apprehensive to implore or employ um, something like zero trust in their business because of the amount of resources and potentially the the idea that you have to change operations or change processes. Uh, and that turns a lot of people off to the technology, but it is out there and it, and it absolutely is something that would have prevented this type of an attack. So if that is not going to be used by a lot of companies, then what needs to occur, in your opinion, moving forward? Companies need to do a better job of adopting at least a cybersecurity framework uh, in their business because a cybersecurity framework will allow you to strengthen the, the different layers that have to be protected. And when we meet with clients and prospects and we educate them about cybersecurity, we show them a model that we've built around these six layers of security that you need to, to take care of. And typically with an attack, we only see, we see at least two or three of these layers that are penetrated uh, before an attack is successful. So if they get through one layer, they have, you know, basically five other layers that they have to deal with. And if they can penetrate one or two more of those, they may be successful. But if companies start doing a better job of protecting these different layers by implementing a cybersecurity framework, you're going to make hacking way less attractive than it is today. Um, it's just too easy for these guys to do what they do today. Uh, and as a, as a community, a security and technology community from the manufacturers all the way down to the service providers, Everybody needs to do a better job of, of how they do things and, and what they're doing around cybersecurity. So should the focus be more so at the IT firm level, companies like yours, or at the business end, or a combination of both? I think uh, as it moves up the chain, the, the, the level of security and how focused the company needs to be needs to increase. So. If you're Microsoft and you're deploying operating systems to millions of computers worldwide, 
the expectation is, is that you're selling uh, a piece of software that is secure. Uh, and I'm here to tell you today that that's not the case with a, a lot of popular software and hardware products out there. So if you're supplying companies like mine with hardware and software, they have to have a level of cybersecurity that's, you know, world class. And, you know, and in the same with companies like mine, we need to lead with security operations that are world class so that the accountants and the electricians and the and the engineers and the companies out there that need to do those types of jobs don't have to spend a lot of time and resources doing this stuff. But that doesn't mean that they're going to be completely immune and hands off. They still need to pay attention to it but they don't need to pay attention to it at the level, say, a Cisco or a Microsoft or, you know, those types of companies need to deal with this. Where do you, where do you land on the debate of paying or not paying these rents? Uh, you know, I, I am not for paying the ransom unless there's a specific business case that, that tells you, okay, it's, it's better to pay the ransom here. You know, if we're talking about, uh, maybe a, a hospital that gets hacked and, you know, they're not going to recover from backup or they're going to recover from backups, but the risk of having that information uh, distributed on the dark web because of double extortion. Um, I, I think at that point we need to, to discuss paying the ransom because now we're talking about thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people's medical records being put out for criminals to then use, to then extort every individual if they wanted to. Uh, so it's a slippery slope for sure. Um, I think I've seen a lot of companies pull the trigger too early on paying the ransom just out of, out of uh, I want to get my business back up and running as quick as possible. And I don't believe that that's a good enough reason. But if we're talking about, you know, medical records or, you know, a actual, uh, piece of infrastructure that is going to disrupt our economy, then then we need to consider those things. Well, so you bring up something that I wanted to discuss with you anyway, the element of infrastructure. And I think that's drawing more attention after Colonial Pipeline uh, was hacked. Now, obviously, the pipeline itself uh, was still, um, even though they shut it down temporarily, it was not impacted. Uh, but there is a growing concern that, at some point, elements of our infrastructure, whether it be uh, oil uh, supply or whether it be uh, the uh, electric grid, uh, could be potentially impacted by a, a, a ransomware attack. 100%. Everybody's, everybody has the chance to be hacked. Um, and that's why people need to really consider what I said at the top of the interview, with, which is implementing zero trust uh, at different levels within your environment. Uh, but the big the big thing is, is we still don't know who was really attacked in this Kaseya attack. It's being reported that no critical infrastructure has been attacked at this point, and we would probably know about it if it was. Um, but it seems to me that the White House is kind of taking the stance that, well, if no critical infrastructure was uh, part of this attack, then we're really not going to put any pressure on Russia uh, for this. And and I and I just find that a little odd because one of the 16 industries in his list was IT companies, and this was a, a direct attack on an IT company. So is it only IT companies that support other critical infrastructure areas, or is it all IT companies? So that's one thing that I'm finding interesting that's coming out of this. Um, I, I really wish the White House would, would do more. All right. Brian, thanks very much for a few moments today. Wish you all the best. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Horning, who is the CEO of Exact IT Solutions.